In this video, I'm going to give you six different techniques for keeping your feet warm when it's cold, freezing, and you're outdoors doing your adventures. My name is Aaron Lindstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. I've had a lot of cold feet over the years, so I'm giving you some of the quick tips that I've got to keep you warm. The first is not to overstuff your feet into your boots. There is a temptation to think, oh, you know what? If I put this sock on and this sock on and jam everything in there, and oh yeah, you know, it's gonna be super warm. I'm gonna put this sock on and it's gonna be great. Well, in fact, that is not going to work simply because what happens is your feet get compressed in the boot and you actually lose circulation. Now, you might have experienced this if you've had shoes that fit too tight and it's mildly irritating, but when I put my double, double thick socks on and I try and get my foot in the boot, ah, I can already feel a massive amount of pressure on my foot and I know that's going to cause my foot to become cold. So it's definitely tip number one is don't go crazy. Even though you think more socks are better, I feel a massive amount of pressure on my boot and there's no way my feet are going to stay warm. It's just like, yeah, not going to happen. In fact, I got to get those off. Whew. That is not enjoyable at all. The second tip is to use an insulated air mattress. There is a temptation to get the less expensive, though very nice, uh, you know, like a NeoAir or something. And these things work really nice. But that large pocket of air inside without any insulation structure will actually give you a very cold night. It's like when you go visit a friend or family member and, oh, we've got this air mattress and you freeze your keister off at night. That's because there's a huge amount of air that's in here that is not insulated. Compare that to, let's say, the uh, Neo Air X Therm, which I have here. You can see, I mean, the, the air mattresses, if I rolled them up, the X-Therm is way bigger than the regular standard Neo Air, but this guy actually works well. How well? I've used this on Denali, on Kilimanjaro, in Yellowstone in the winter when it's minus 40 degrees, and it works very well, especially combined with a foam pad on top of it. So definitely make sure, do not just use a basic air mat when you're trying to sleep on icy conditions or on glaciers because you will freeze and you will not have a very good time doing it. The next tip that goes along with the socks is make sure not to have boots that have too small a toe box for your feet. My feet in particular are a little bit wider uh, than I would say standard, which kind of causes me some consternation because my foot doesn't fit as well in boots. Oops, I gotta get the right boot here. But what happens is when I put this boot on, I end up having to buy a boot that's a little bit larger in the length so I fit my toe box. Now there are some inconveniences to that in that my foot will slide back and forth and I'll have some annoyances that I can deal with with a heel cup. But if the toe box is too tight on my feet, that crushing factor is going to cause my metatarsals, the bones in my feet, to start crunching together. And also that pressure is going to restrict blood flow and make my feet cold. So that's definitely a tip number three you want to pay attention to is make sure the toe box width is adequate for your feet so that they do not get squashed. Now, tip number four you may not have thought of and this is pretty interesting, is to make sure to warm up your boot liners if you have them. These cubes do not have them. But if you have boot liners, make sure to pre-warm them in the morning before putting your boots on because when you put these things on, let's say it's minus 30 degrees, you're going to be putting your foot into a minus 30 degree liner that is not enjoyable. And even though these particular ones are wool, they might be neoprene or whatever, by pre-warming your boot liner, it actually makes a big difference in your outdoor experience. And the way you do that is simply to take your boot liners out. I'll just do it with one. Literally stuff them under your armpits, zip up your jacket, and just sit there while you're eating breakfast. You definitely want to get this process started about half an hour before you get going because it does take some time 
for your boot liner to warm up. So you literally just take those bad boys out, jam them in there, and that will keep you plenty warm when you get started in your feet. Before I give you the fifth tip, I want to remind you that I've got over 15 videos as a series, check out the playlist link below, on how to keep your feet warm while you're outdoors, hiking, biking, skiing, adventuring, or whatever you do. Also, I have a book called How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold. It's got all the tips in this video, plus more tips over I think like 90 plus tips in that thing. And please like and comment on the video, and if you found it useful at the end, subscribe to the channel. Now the next tip I have is the corollary to keeping your liners warm is actually to pre-warm your boots. Now, if you have a form-fitting jacket like this, it's going to be really hard to do. So what I do in the morning is when I've got my boot liner in my jacket, is I actually stuff in my big parka, I actually put my boots on my body and wrap myself up as tip number five. Now, I look absolutely absurd, right? I'm, I'm completely overstuffed here and I'm going crazy, but it's very critical to the warmth of your feet that you keep your boots and your liners warm up to the last second before you put them on because what happens is if your boots and your liners are cold and you put your feet in them and you mess around for a while, your feet are going to chill and you're going to have cold feet all day. It's not an enjoyable experience. So definitely make sure to not only warm your liners but also your boots as tip number five. And tip number six for the beginning outdoor people is do not use cotton socks in your adventures. I know we all like our white cotton socks or girls with their real low cut socks that they don't show, but these will make your feet cold or actually possibly invite some frostbite or frost nip because though cotton socks are cold, they do not retain heat at all when they are wet. How would your socks get wet? By simply having your feet sweat when you're skiing downhill or climbing up a hill or doing a boot pack or climbing some big mountain, cotton socks will get soaked and then your feet will freeze. Compare that to wool socks. Wool socks keep your feet wet. I had an incident in Greenland where I got my feet completely soaked and oh my gosh, I'm super lucky. Thank goodness I didn't have cotton socks on. Check it out in Antarctic Tears. The link below, that was a huge mistake that happened to me. So definitely avoid cotton socks. And that is tip number six. I hope you found this video useful. My name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please like and comment on the video. And if you found it useful, subscribe to the channel to help it out. Check out links below to all the items I've discussed in this video and also to the books and resources I've provided you. Thank you very much and keep your feet warm. Thank <sweak> you.